we have geometry notes 11.5, okay? And you have the volume of a prism going down here. This is prism volume, okay? The volumes were found with these dimensions over here. This is a 1 by 1 by 1, so I go 1 times 1 times 1. This is a 1 by 1 by 3, 1 times 1 times 3, prism volume. 1 times 2 times 3, 6. 2 times 2 times 3, 12. And I got 3 times 1 times 6, it's 18. Those are all prisms, okay, the volume of them. But inside each one of them is a pyramid. And once we see that pyramid inside, we recognize that the volume of the pyramid is connected somehow to the volume of the prism. Okay, pyramid volume is area of base times height, just like prisms, except you take a third of them. Times one third, times one third, times one third. And that equals times one third. No way. It's like this all the way through, Bloom. It's times one third. I do the stuff, and it's the volume of a pyramid. Well, today's theme is volume is one third area of base, big B, times height. That's it. Okay? So it's the stuff we do today is just as nice and quick as the stuff we did yesterday as far as area of base times height. Now we do one third of that area of base times height for pyramids, okay? Now, hustling on, ooh, we're gonna get to that in a second. Um, theorem 11.8, okay, volume of pyramid. That's what we just talked about. Volume of a pyramid's one third big B times H. And big B is a specific formula for the base. You identify the base shape. You pick out your formula that you already know from chapter 10 for the base. You find that base area, multiply by height, divide by three, and you have the volume of a pyramid. Cavalieri's principle. When it's slanted with the oblique, hey, we find the volume the same way. Area of base times height, you take a third of it, you got volume of a pyramid. Now, one of the things that people have a hard time with is slant height and height. Height is on the inside of the shape, okay? When it's a regular shape, it goes from the center of the shape up to the vertex. That fills the shape. It's in the center of the shape. When it fills the shape, that's volume. When it's on the surface, we're talking surface area, that slant height, the lazy height, okay? So the lazy height is used, the slant height is used for our surface area dimension when we do surface area. Now, the entrance to the Louvre Museum in Paris, France, is a square pyramid with height 21.64 meters and base edge of 35.4. What's the appro approximate volume of the Louvre? First, it's a square pyramid. So the length of an edge right here is 35.4. So because it's square, big B is a square. Okay, so that's side squared, so that's 35.4 squared for big B. Well, I got my volume going on. I got big B covered. I'm doing one-third of that. Okay, big B is a square, so that I've got the area of a square. I got a height. They tell me 21.64. And I got my final answer, okay, as I get that done. Now I've got some folks, oh, that's all fine and dandy, but, but when will I ever need to do this? I don't know what you're going to do in life. I don't. Right now, you could be anything. It's up to you, okay, and where you want to go, what you want to learn about throughout. But here's the thing. With volume, okay, with volume, volume is used for different things. They sell cars with it. Hey, this is how much square, square uh, cubic foot or cubic inches of cargo room this has. But also when I'm bidding out furnaces, air conditioning, those are sold to take care of a certain volume, okay? If I'm in the school here, when they spec out this system, it's sold because of volume, and if there's a certain amount of time the air has got to turn over. In a pool, there's a pump that turns over the water in a certain amount of time because of specs that are out of health codes, okay? If it's not turning it over that fast enough, it's the wrong size, okay? 
I don't know what you're going to do, but I do know that you're going to need this stuff as a basic start, okay? Or at least have an idea that exists so you have a basic start. Area, the surface area, slant type, volume, height. Make sure you know we're taking care of that stuff as we go. It's your turn. Read carefully. You might have some stuff already done for you. A sports arena shaped like a pyramid has a base area of about 300,000 feet squared and a height of 321 feet. What's the approximate volume of the arena? Do I have to decide what I got to use for the base shape of my pyramid? Or do I already have the area of the base? I've already got it. Read carefully. So I already got the area of the base. I pop it in, 300,000. I don't have to do anything fancy. I multiply by height, 321, and I'm off to the races. What's the approximate volume of the arena? Excuse me, 32,100,000 feet cubed. 32,100,000 feet cubed. Now, some of these are that fast, so long as you know what you need when you're doing the problem. Okay, 300,000 was the base area. Well, that's big B, base area. One third big B times height. Okay, boom, done. But when you read it, you got to know that when you're reading it. If you are not given the height of a pyramid, you can find, the, find it using a Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm going to change it a little bit. I'm, I've got slant height. Slant height's L. Okay, I've got slant height. I have half of that 400. That's where I got 20. Half of the 400, that's where I get 20. Okay, 440 is where I get 20. Okay, and I'm going to use those dimensions to help me. Now, keep in mind, 20 is the length of my apothem of a square. That's my apothem, the distance from the midpoint into the center. I'm just looking from the length from the midpoint to the vertex, the height. So I pop everything in. Okay, so I've got h squared plus 20 squared equals 25 squared. Keep in mind the basics for Pythagorean theorem. We're going to use this to help us find height. So I've got h squared plus 400 equals 625. I subtract 400, I got h squared equals 25. Well, that's a perfect square. That's 15 squared, okay? So I've got the height of 15. Now, are there any questions about using the Pythagorean theorem? We've used it now three days, I think, in a row as we've gone, but we've used it for every chapter so far in the entire text. In three, all I want you to do is find the height of the pyramids. So basically I'm saying use Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So you're given 12. That's my hypotenuse. You're given that this is 10. So 5 is my distance in my apothem. Find my H. Go. I'll even start it out for you. Go ahead. Get her done. Get her done. Get her done. Get her done. Good placement, didn't I? It's covered right it up. Okay. H squared plus 25 equals 144. Subtract, I get or I get 119. Now, I'm just going to take the square root of 119. Are you okay that 119 is between 10 and 11? Because 10 is a perfect square, it's 100. 11 is perfect square, is 121. 119 is between those two, so the result of the square root of 119 is between 10 and 11. Okay, so I know that. It's 10 point something. Okay, but 
it's being used as a calculation. I want to carry all the significant information, so I leave it like that until I put it in my calculator, okay? Your turn. Do be, get her done. I didn't have anything set up on that. It's your turn to try to break it down. Very similar fashion, by the way. Very similar. As we're going through here, maybe, oh, I put it down on the bottom. Let me slide this up. Slide this over a little bit. Okay. As you're going through, are you okay with the square root of 443.75? Yes or no? We either get it or we don't right now. It's not a, well, I'm close. We shouldn't be close. We should be, I get it. Okay. Now, remember. You use volume, to find volume, you use H, the height, because the volume fills the interior. H is the distance on the interior from the center of the base up in a regular pyramid, okay? Keep that in mind. When we're working with surface area, something along the surface, we use slant height, the lazy height, okay? Now. We found 15 above. I'm going to tell you right now. We already did it. So all I want you to do is find the cubic volume of cubic. What is the volume in cubic feet of a square pyramid with base edge 40 feet and slant height 25 feet? Okay, go. Get it done. You're doing number four. On your own. On your own. Yes, sir. Okay, now keep in mind, I found 15 before. If I didn't find it before, I would have to go through that Pythagorean theorem to help me find my height. But since I found it already, and I've hidden it apparently, there we go. So I got this stuff going on. I have one third base times height. My base is a square, that's why it's 40 squared. Okay, keep in mind, it's a square. The big B is the area of my pyramid's base. Happens to be a square, that's why it's 40 times 40. Now, multiply it out, it's got 8,000 feet cubed. Are you okay with how I'm finding it? How can I make these harder? I write them out like number five. Okay, pyramids and prisms are named by their bases. Okay, pyramids and prisms are named by their bases. So what is the volume of a square pyramid with base edges 24 meters and slant height 13? So read the question, try to sketch your own, look at my sketch, okay, and compare them. But I'm telling you, there will be a question on the test. You have to come up with the sketch. You have to decide what to do based on the words in the problem, not the stuff in the diagram. So check it out, do the reading, do the problem. You guys are doing this next one right now. So you're doing problem five. Make sure you're in it. Make sure you're here. Don't be someplace else.
Yes, sir. Found above, right there. The 15 was found between the examples 2 and 3, and that example for the Pythagorean theorem. That's why I have up here, you found it above, and I have that arrow pointing. Okay? Okay, now, so 5, you're finding H, and you're finding out that H is 5, right? Did you find that H was 5? Yeah. Okay, the height's 5. Okay, based on our Pythagorean theorem setup. The danger of this when you're doing the test, you forget to take half of the side length or find that you're, it's the, the apothem's distance, midpoint from the, you know, on the side into the center. That's the apothem. Okay, you got to have the apothem. And then you do that work with your Pythagorean theorem. Okay, after you're done with that, I've got my one-third big B times height. I could have a pentagon. Because the apothem in is to the center, and the distance from the center up is your height. So we can still do this with any shape. Big B happens to be 24 because it's a square times H. Okay, as I'm doing this, maybe if I got it, it's 5. That's what we just found. Now, 1 third of 24 squared. Pop it all in my calculator, and I'm counting up with 960 meters cubed. Are you doing okay? Is it making sense? Okay, now we got one more shape to do. Cones. Okay, well, I got news for you. They come to a point just like pyramids. So we're going to do one third area of base times height. Base area is pi r squared, right? So we got pi r squared as our base area. So one third pi r squared h. That is the volume of a cone. It actually takes three cones to fill a cylinder with the same dimensions. It takes three pyramids to fill another prism with the same dimensions. Okay, that's how they're related. I'm going to try to hit on that as hard as I can so you know that that's the case. That one-third is a big deal. Now, oh, flipping the page. One third pi r squared h. This is one third pi r squared h. This is one third pi r squared h. This is one third pi r squared h. Three one thirds becomes pi r squared h all by itself. Three over three is just one. I need you to see the visual. If I took three cones that have the same dimensions as the cylinder, radius and height but the cones are a third the size of it. Okay, so you know that as we go through. Go ahead, get that down, make sure it's there, make sure it's clearly legible so you can read it when you reread these notes. Okay, finding that the number one issue with students in showing work is them reading their own handwriting. Okay. Now, as we slide on, oh, I'm going to wait. We've got some people going. I've got two problems. We're going to skip problem six and problem seven. We're going right to problem eight and nine. We're going to be done with notes. Okay? I want you to start problem eight. You're using the formula one-third pi r squared h because that's the volume of a cone. So go for it. In problem eight, problem eight is the first one you're doing. Problem eight. Okay. Remember, Cavalieri's principle states that even so oblique, it's the same problem. It's the same method. One third area of base times height. Area of base in a cone, pi r squared h is the height. Now, pi r squared is the base area. And after you do 8, do 9, go right to it. After you do 8, do 9, go right to it.
Nobody pull a blue blue Radley with these things, okay? Yeah, I wouldn't either. Okay, we're going to check these answers, and then we're, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do next. Are you okay with 452.39? If I did it in terms of pi, it would be here. Terms of pi, rounded to the hundredth. Any questions? And the next one, terms of pi, here someplace, I hit it. Apparently, there it is, 1,875 pi feet cubed, 1,875 pi feet cubed. Are we doing okay? Okay, now here's the thing. That was about pointy things. Pyramids, cones are one-third their corresponding prisms that have the same dimensions, okay? Now, for those folks at home, you're missing out on a fun tough.